Bay Area of California, drivers rely on bridges to overcome an incredible natural obstacle, water. A series of inlets including San Francisco Bay, a body of water stretching up to 19 kilometers wide and 96 kilometers long. Seven large bridges carry more than 400,000 cars across the bays every day. In the northeast, three bridges sit side by side, spanning the Carquinas Strait. This is where it all started in 1927. In the middle stands the once famous Carquinas Bridge. It was the first major bridge in the Bay Area. She was one of the world's longest highway bridges when she was built in 1927. 80 years ago, her three lanes were a traffic savior. Today, they're not enough. 109,000 cars cross this strait every day. The grand old car Kinas isn't big enough to handle the load and she's too expensive to maintain. She must come down. This is how it's usually done. But that won't work for the Carquinas. An explosion could damage the neighboring bridges. The one to the east sits just 40 meters away. The other even closer. But the Carquinas isn't just blocked in from the sides. It's also blocked in underneath. If any piece enters the strait below, it will pollute a protected habitat for seabirds, seals, and other wildlife, including rare and endangered species. Toxic lead paint covers nearly every part of the metal structure. When the California Department of Transportation decommissioned the bridge in 2005, they requested bids to see who could pull down the Carquinas in the right way for the best price. Five contracting firms entered their bids. Most wanted to use large and expensive water-based equipment to dismantle the bridge. But one small firm, California Engineering Contractors, had a different idea. Their plan? To bring down each 630-ton section all at once by lowering them with cables onto two awaiting barges. Each bridge span would become a vessel wider than the width of an aircraft carrier and be pushed away by tugboats. Not only has this innovative technique never been attempted, California engineering contractors claims it can do it for just $18 million, 10 million less than the nearest competitor. Their low bid wins them the job, but they have a secret plan to recoup some of the money. Recycling. Workers hack at the bridge day and night. There's some 22,000 tons of steel and concrete in the Carquinas. Properly recycled, the steel alone is worth more than $2 million. Project manager David Piermarini has planned this job for eight months. There's little to no waste on a demolition project like this. What we do here on the job site is we cut it up into, into members that are manageable, put it into trailers and different uh, types of containers, and they bring it right over to the scrapyard. A 
A crew gets to work on the south end of the bridge. Heavy machinery pulls down the concrete towers. Steel rods called rebar sit inside the concrete to give it strength. This rebar will also be recycled. Bridge engineer Jay Coleman knows there's value in every scrap of steel. The steel industry has been recycling for a long time because of just the, the driving economics behind it. It's cheaper to harvest steel from this old column than it is to harvest iron ore from the ground and make new steel. Even the rubble will be pulverized and made into roads. It's a steel cantilever truss bridge that we're taking apart. It's 12,000 tons of steel as well as a significant amount of concrete, and we're tasked with completely removing the bridge so that when we're all done with this project, there will be no trace. This is a dream for an engineer to be a part of something like this, and this is why we do this. But the biggest challenge sits 15 stories above the water, the suspended middle spans. The innovative plan to lower the middle spans in one piece means smaller crews can safely and efficiently salvage the steel on land. It will be another big saving if the crews can pull it off. Each span stretches longer than a jumbo jet, stands as tall as a 10-story building, and weighs more than 635 tons. There's no textbook for this kind of teardown. It's a world first. But the team has a bold idea. They will determine how the bridge was constructed and then reverse the process. The blueprints for their strategy will be based on methods used by engineers 80 years ago. What we're doing here is not very different from how they built the bridge. Physics uh, are the same, gravity is the same. In 1927, Steel workers assembled the giant center spans on a dock. They then floated them on barges underneath the already constructed towers. They rigged the spans to cable and pulley systems connected to gigantic sand-filled counterweights. When engineers released the counterweights, the spans on the barges became the world's largest elevators rising into place in less than an hour. Workers then connected the spans to the towers and completed the major part of the bridge's construction. In theory, a similar system should work in reverse. But eight decades ago, the Carquinas wasn't flanked by other structures. And the water below wasn't a protected habitat. One thing is the same. Lives depend on getting it right. A wrong calculation could be catastrophic. A delicate feat of engineering requiring precise science is needed to safely take down the 80-year-old Carquinas Bridge. Bridge engineer Jay Coleman must first calculate exactly how much the spans weigh. If we don't put enough thought into it and if we don't do things step by step, um, you know, you could get into trouble overloading the structure. It's in very close proximity to two lifeline bridges. Anything we do here can't damage those adjacent structures. The only weight they know for sure is the weight of the spans when they went up in 1927. 635 tons each. But those spans were raised before the concrete and steel road was laid over top. We really study the process of how the, the structure was built in the first place because the, the simplest thing to do is to do a reverse engineering to look at what seemed to work for the original contractor back in 1927. 
Reverse engineering a span requires stripping it of its concrete surface and steel road supports to get it back to its original weight. Workers rip up the road with heavy machinery. Chief mechanic Hector Macias must keep it all running. It's pretty intense work. We got a bobcat, we got man lifts, we got welders, generators, and compressors. And it all happens during one of California's wettest years. 825 millimeters of rain in just two months. It was raining cats and dogs. I mean, I had to change my boots three times one day, and I ran out of boots. <laughs> High winds and cold rain make an already dangerous job more so. Lunch, whatever you want to do for about one and there's another problem for Hector. As the road around the main crane is stripped, the rig is left stranded on a tower of steel. The crane will lower the smaller equipment once the spans are down, but nothing can lower the 54-ton crane itself. Its fate is sealed. It will get cut up, lowered in pieces, and recycled with the rest of the bridge. It's all part of the plan and the only way to get the job done. With the roadway now gone, the spans weigh what they did 80 years ago. Now the engineers know exactly how much weight they must lower. But the lighter spans are less stable and more vulnerable to the San Francisco Bay's high winds. The engineers know from history, a strong gale and an unstable bridge can be a disastrous combination. Nineteen forty, Tacoma, Washington. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge opens with great fanfare. Nearly a mile across, it is the third longest suspension bridge in the world. But months later, a storm brings 64 kilometer per hour winds and the bridge begins to oscillate. The winds stay steady and the shaking worsens each hour. Finally, the cables holding up the roadway can no longer take the tension. The Tacoma Narrows comes down in a heap of twisted steel. The Carquinas, stripped of its roadway, is also susceptible to high winds. Right now, each span is a shell and more vulnerable than ever. Engineers want to bring down the spans as soon as possible, but they'll only do so in calm weather. So far, project manager David Piermarini has had no luck. The winds keep exceeding the safety limit for lowering 24 kilometers per hour. We set it up on three different occasions and had to postpone it on three different occasions. Every delay increases the chance of the bridge being hit by gale force winds. Tomorrow's forecast calls for winds pushing 24 kilometers per hour. It's right on the limit and a tough call. The Coast Guard must close the strait below for the operation, but they'll only prohibit boat traffic for 48 hours. The strait is an important shipping lane so David and his crew must finish the job on time. David seizes the small window of opportunity and gives the order to bring the span down. Yeah, just horse, stand by. From this point on, workers must race the clock 